So last night I watched the David Harwood Psychosis and Me. I've only just got around to watching it because um, my daughter's had chicken pox, um, has chicken pox. So I'm a bit behind with watching that, but I wanted to do a video off the back of that because um, I think psychosis is something that isn't spoken about very much at all. Um, I, obviously there's a lot of stigma behind mental health in general regardless of what the specific condition or illness is but I think psychosis in particular really does hold a lot of stigma and watching that documentary last night I realised that actually even I haven't spoken about it that much and I was kind of wondering to myself really why that is um, and then I was thinking about writing my book and I realised that actually the part that was the hardest for me writing it knowing that it was going to be put out there for other people to read was the psychosis part mainly um and the diary entries or scribbles um that kind of went along with that because out of everything i've kind of dealt with the depression with the uh feeling suicidal anorexia self-harm psychosis is something that i found very difficult to deal with um, and after my last episode when I was um, hospitalised with the depression that followed that manic burst with psychotic features um, I actually had like flashbacks of that so um, while I was in hospital and when I left I would be walking around and I feel all anxious even <clears throat> talking about it I would be walking around and all of a sudden something would hit me that I'd thought or seen or heard or felt or whatever it was that would stop me dead in my tracks wherever I was and I would literally burst into tears and that took a long time to get over and I couldn't, I felt ashamed, I couldn't get my head around why I had experienced these things, um, especially because with myself a lot of it which kind of brought the hairs up on my arms when I watched the David Harwood one last night with some of the things that were said. The um, the lady that was in it said about the, the white van that had the um, purity meaning um, and David Harwood himself in the notes, um, it was something about the Garden of Eden. It literally brought hairs up on my arms last night because for anybody that's read my book will know um, whenever I've had an episode like this it has been like I've been drawn towards like a colour thing which has been of a religious nature so often red or white because of purity um, my scribblings from 2016 was about the Garden of Eden I was making these rose jars and my brain completely went on one on that track of roses what they meant the Garden of Eden I started making these apple things and that was to do with the forbidden fruit on the tree and it just went on and on and on so I could really relate to a lot of that last night but at the time and after well after I I'm not religious at all like <laughs> I'm not religious and so for me I couldn't get my head round why I had thought these things and felt these things especially when as for me as my general day-to-day -day self that is not a part of who I am so it's not like those thoughts had come from anywhere that I specifically think about in my day-to-day -day life because I'm in no way religious. And I found it extremely, extremely difficult to get over that. Um, and the last hospital admission I had in, in 2016, a lot of the group therapy for me was kind of crying and getting upset about the fact that I... I couldn't bear the fact that I'd experienced this. I couldn't bear the fact that my brain had broken, hence the in bloom not broken, to that degree um, that I had experienced these things that a lot of it I had no recollection of until people would tell me things which would kind of bring it back, which would bring on this panic. And it's an awful, awful thing. I've always said to people, the only way I can truly describe going through that experience and having an episode like that is it is like your nightmares can meet you in reality and you're living your nightmares and I think there's a lot of um, 
stigma around the fact that when people are manic that people are very happy and creative and that can be the case and it is the case with me sometimes if I'm hyper manic which is a step down from full on mania but if it goes to full blown mania that happiness and that feeling that they, they spoke about in the Dave Carwood of feeling important and feeling like almost like you're on a rush um, that you can do anything it doesn't last that long and it very quickly spirals into feeling confused feeling agitated like David Harwood I felt like I had this mission this thing to do and when things got in the way I didn't understand and I, I couldn't figure out what to do next and how to fix it and make it right so I could really relate to that documentary um, so that feeling of the initial rush and like the whole watching the sunrise which I could identify with and things like that and everything feeling beautiful and vibrant it doesn't last very long before it tips into awfulness where your nightmares literally meet you in reality um, so I just wanted to oh, I do want to do this I just wanted to I mean I've got loads of it but um, anyone that's read my book will um, know that the final chapters to sort of talk about psychosis and um yeah i just kind of wanted to to show you what that kind of looks like on paper and for me because i always kept a diary but for me the where it started going wrong is just literally pages and pages of scribble and um i don't know whether you can see that and that basically says, I don't know what date specifically this was from because these are all undated, but this says, my thoughts aren't my thoughts, it feels like they're being put there. Everything anyone says is repeating and beating around my head with other words all muddled in, I swear my head is going to explode. And that's what it kind of felt like. I mean, I could talk about this forever because there's so many aspects, but I remember people talking to me and the last syllable of everybody's words would literally bounce around my head and repeat to the point where I couldn't then focus on the next thing I was thinking or what I was going to say um, and it got to the point where I was just so kind of like chaotic and my words and, and thoughts and everything were all over the place um, and this isn't the only thing like this I have but I just basically would sit and write the alphabet over and over and over again um, so yeah I just wanted to share that to say if you have experienced psychosis I understand but please let's not be ashamed at the end of the day it's an illness like any other and that documentary highlighted it so well and I really um, resonated with so much of it so if you have experienced um, psychosis it's okay I was ashamed for so long about this um, but it, why, why should I feel more embarrassed to speak about that than I am? anorexia or the depression and I know people feel differently about different things but for me this was the most ashamed but it's a mental illness like any other is it not and it doesn't mean that people are dangerous it doesn't mean that people are scary I know it can look scary but there's this stigma as well that people are gonna people that are psychotic are going to hurt people you think psychotic and you think you know there's a lot of stigma that goes with it and um it's not the case it's not the case um most of the time people with psychosis are very scared very confused um and just don't know what to do and the likelihood of you know it actually being dangerous um is very slim 